Hey guys, this week we're going to do something a little different. We're going to give some shooting tips based on field positions and how we actually get a lot of the shots done in our videos. It's not meant to be for Olympic shooters or, you know, field target. We're talking about getting a shot done in field conditions on animals or even just plinking in the backyard. But the way that we keep our guns steady when we're walking around and have to take an offhand shot or a kneeling shot, we don't do a lot of sitting because the farms are pretty dirty, but we have somewhere in the middle um, that I hope really helps you guys out. And today we're gonna be shooting the Crown Continuum with the 380 millimeter barrel, the Night Force on top. And without further ado, we're gonna hit the range, show you some, uh, some styling shots. <laughs> in other words, I'm gonna be in some odd positions, but mostly we're gonna focus on offhand and a squatting shot that I take a lot. So stay tuned. So the main point of shooting offhand is to not influence the gun with muscles. We wanna let it sit not influence it too much other than guiding it onto target and have a nice steady squeeze. We're not going to jerk that trigger because if you do, you're going to miss down and right almost every time. You want to just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as long as your wobbling crosshairs are staying on target. My target is this little orange disc right here. And we're going to fire up scope cam so you can watch my wobble. Everyone has it. The more you practice, the smaller it'll be. And the whole point is just to let it wobble and take the shot as long as it's still on target. So we've got two perfectly centered and one a touch low. Now I'm going to slow that down and you're going to be able to watch that there is actually quite a bit of wobble. It's not that I just timed it and punched it. It's wobbling, but I'm comfortable with that wobble, and that's why I continued to press the trigger. Let's see that on slow-mo. you guys I went inside to warm up I reviewed the footage and I shot a little too quickly to illustrate my point so I'm gonna intentionally hold it longer and let you see that wobble and squeeze some off I'll probably shoot worse because I'm off my natural timing but I want to show you that there can be some wobble because in the scope cam footage it almost looks like I timed it but I, I was just shooting fast um, so here we go again going to create a platform let it get full contact and now hopefully we can watch the the crosshairs wobble a little bit instead of slide on and go boom so here we go So hopefully you can see that wobble now in the slow-mo and <clears throat> it's repeatable. As long as that wobble is on that target, I'm gonna squeeze. And the target that I'm shooting is about the size of a pigeon body. If I was trying to take, you know, a headshot or a neck shot, that wobble zone is gonna be much smaller. The accepted level of wobble is gonna be smaller. And we have to keep that in mind as we're shooting. You know, any hit on steel is a hit. It's not so with animals, so keep that wobble, you know, up towards the top. That's why a lot of guys shoot pigeons from, you know, the top half up, specifically in the next zone, because you have more 
ability to miss right, miss left, no worries. Miss a little low, no worries. Miss a little high, you get a headshot. It's the most repeatable aiming place where you can either miss clean or take them out. And if you just trim a couple of feathers, that's okay. I mean, if you get a pigeon solidly in the neck, they're all done. But this applies to any animal, any target. You have to decide what your target zone of wobble is going to be. So like on a deer, I'm not saying as long as your crosshairs are on that deer, you're good. What I'm saying is if you determine that, you know, there's a nine inch pie plate that you want to hit, as long as your wobble is on that nine inch pie plate, keep squeezing. All right, guys. So the next position is a bit awkward. It is literally squatting. And while this is not as great as sitting on your butt and locking in, it's a really practical position for hunting. Whether it's rained or there's snow, or in our case a lot, in barns and around barnyards, the ground is just covered in manure. So we want to take a shot, let's say, that's further than we're comfortable shooting offhand. We want a little bit more support. Well, let's create it. So we're standing, we see a bird we want, we squat, get like on the balls of your feet, but have your heels in contact as well. And then let's create some support systems. So just in front of your knee goes your elbow. Same thing on the other side. Bone on bone is a little slippy. Muscle on bone, near bone in joints is actually quite stable. So we squat locate this elbow here knee here same thing with the other one and again we're gonna do the same thing where we're just creating a platform with our support hand and this one's gonna try not to influence and we're gonna run the scope cam again you might see that there's a little less wobble this time and that's because we have more support now so let's get down here and the other thing to notice is that you know you might have to watch your rear a bit if you've got an audience. <laughs> Here we go. Now that target was swinging a bit, but the wobble really wasn't there anymore. And that's because I have so much more support. So when we go ahead and squeeze and decide we want to squeeze, you just want to make sure that it's locked in and staying on your spot, just like with offhand only. It's going to be a little easier to do. The real downside to this position is twofold. If you're older or really out of shape, it's going to be really hard to do. You kind of have to be a younger guy to do this. The other thing is it doesn't work that great if you're shooting way up high because now you gotta like rock back and you can like do that and I've done it and it's better than offhand, but it's not nearly as nice as locking in like this straight forward. So I hope that if you can do that position, you'll add it to your arsenal because it is a lot more stable than shooting offhand. All right, now I've got some corks. Where are you? There you are. I have four corks whiskey bottle corks of course up on that rail right there and we're gonna see how we can do on them offhand it's not gonna be easy they're tiny it's just like taking a headshot on a pigeon and now you should really see the wobble just to the left there it is there it is. There it is. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say that maybe it was better than I usually shoot. I don't know. But hopefully you saw the crosshairs wobble. And we smoked a bunch of the corks. Four out of five shots. I'll take that. But no matter what you do in these positions, what you need to remember is wobble is okay as long as it's within your acceptable range. Now, that first shot, I missed. That happens, and I thought it was in the acceptable wobble, and it wasn't. Um, but with a headshot, you know, you're either killing or missing on a pigeon. So 
pretty happy with that. I hope that these tips helped you guys. And just remember that support is what we're after. So if you can't find it artificially, we're gonna create our own, either by locking against our body and just laying it on the platform or getting that knee and elbow with the elbow just ahead of the knee so you have flesh on bone um, for your support. I think that those are really valuable shooting positions to have in your arsenal. And until next time, I'm out. Hey guys, wait one second. I'm not out yet. This is the gun that I was using. We went over it really quick before, but I always get a ton of gear questions, so let me answer a few right now. The bar, or the regulator rather, is set at 160 bar. That's how it was when it showed up to my house, and I've shot it like that ever since. I haven't tuned this gun at all. It doesn't need it. Um, I've played with my other crown a lot. This one just shot right out of the box. And I'm shooting the 380 millimeter barrel with the standard pellet liner, a Donnie FL on top. This made a huge difference. We actually swapped mid hunt one day from the stock moderator to this just because it was so much quieter. Um, and it's wearing a night force on top. I'm hoping to actually swap out to an Athlon on this so that I can get it to focus better at 25. All the footage you just saw was at 25 yards and um, the night force really doesn't focus well um, out to about 50 for when you put magnification on. So I had to shoot everything at five and a half power, which is fine for close offhand shooting. Um, but you're going to see a change. You're going to see this one disappear and something else come on. That's why it's the close focus and the, uh, the Athlon is a little bit brighter. And that's about it. This gun is a simple workhorse that just does it over and over again for me. So I'm super pumped. And of course, I have the Sabre Tactical bottle adapter for the bipod because I needed one. If you saw the last hunt that I did with this gun and the gun fell over, yeah, had to have it. Anyway, maybe some slow-mo replays. Stick around. Done. Done, done.